I will start to tell you about my Christmas, because this year it was a very special Christmas for me. I woke up uh, alone in my tent in Antarctica, about 25 kilometers north of the South Pole. I'm at the coldest and the most uncivilized continent in the world on my way skiing to the geographic South Pole. And the first thing I do is that I phone my family that are all gathered in front of the stove to see if Santa Claus has left any Christmas present in there, because that's a tradition in my family. And when I speak to them, I try to sound happy and not to show how tired and worn down I feel. Because for the last uh, 38 days, I've been skiing for average uh, 30 kilometers per day. And my goal is to reach the South Pole at Christmas Eve. But I'm really not sure if I will make it. But I pack my stuff and my tent, put on my skis and... Uh, start to pull my sledge over the ice. And you only see ice uh, in the horizon and the blue sky. Well, that's uh, what you're supposed to see. Uh, but this day, it was a total blizzard. So the only thing I see is uh, the top of my skis. And uh, I have to stare down at my compass to walk in the right direction. But after a few hours, the blizzard disappears. And for the first time, I see the South Pole. Jag ser Sydpolen. Och solen har kommit fram. Jag tror jag kommer klara det. Blickotårarna bara sprutar in i gågelserna. Herregud. Det har varit en tuff... Vecka. <laughs> det måste jag ha det eftersom jag är så här uh, emotional. Åh <laughs> oh, shit. 18 uh, kilometer någonting kvar. <laughs> jag tror att det kommer gå. <laughs> Herregud. Jag har inte ens kommit fram än. Hur, hur kommer den här dagen bli? <laughs> Och det är julafton. Åh <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, this winter, I skied alone to the South Pole, and it's uh, 1,130 kilometers from the coast to the pole. Uh, and when I got to the pole, I took help by the wind, and I kited back out to the coast again. So the total distance was about 2,250 kilometers. And I will try to demonstrate for you how far that is. Um, let's say the total distance that I traveled was here to the end of the screen. Um, and I will compare that with the Vasalopp, you know, the cross-country ski race that is, that is 90 kilometers long. So if I start here and I take one half step, that's one Vasalopp. About... 4,000 people has climbed Mount Everest, and uh, almost uh, 400 people has skied from the coast to the South Pole. And at the plateau of Antarctica, it's uh, not a single sign of life. It's too cold and too sterile for any animals or plants to live or grow there. And that could maybe seem a bit cold and not so nice and unfriendly. Maybe, but for me, this was my dream and a paradise. Uh, the temperatures I had were about minus 10 to minus 30 degrees. And uh, when it reached its coldest in Antarctica, they measured temperatures to down to minus 89 Celsius. So it can be cold. And when it's wind, the wind is cold. And the day were, days were very similar, and it's all about doing the same thing day after day, to have uh, good routines, and uh, everything was planned uh, from the start. I knew what I was going to eat and how much I was going to eat every day, and every little gram has been uh, carefully thought through. And it's really important with a 
preparations because I'm far away from help. So the repair kit has been uh, really checked exactly. And also the first aid kit had pills for most kind of health conditions. So that I'm, that I'm normally working as a nurse felt like a good thing. Uh, <coughs> and all these details are important to make the whole expedition successful. And if there's a small part forgotten or um, missing, it could jeopardize the whole trip. And I think that's also something you can think of in other things, not only a polar expedition. If you have thought about all the details uh, in a big project, you have a bigger chance of succeeding, either if it's in your work or if it's in your life. I was skiing very strictly after my watch. I skied for exactly one uh, hour and then I stopped for five minutes to eat and drink to get energy. And after I skied for about 10 to 11 hours, um, I stopped and uh, put up my tent, put snow around my tent so the wind doesn't take it. And then I have to pack out everything from the sledge to get into the tent and I melted snow so I could get water so I could eat and drink. And first after that, I could lie down and, and rest. And after I've skied for about a month, I realized that it's gone much faster than I thought. And when I got closer to the South Pole, I decided that I will try to reach the pole for Christmas Eve. And if I would succeed doing that, I would also beat the female world record. And I was uh, tempted to give it a go. Uh, but it would show that these last days was also the hardest part of the trip. Both that both my head and my body was tired and also the um, altitude was affecting me more than I thought it would. I started at sea level and the South Pole is at 2,800 meters. And um, that's because Antarctica is a continent with land and mountains and on top of that it lies several thousand meters of thick ice. And this high altitude um, makes the air thinner, so it was harder to breathe. And also, the sand, uh, um, snow feels more like uh, sandpaper because of the cold and dry climate. So the sledge that I thought would feel lighter in the end felt heavier. Um, and I started to think, am I pushing myself too hard? But what I think helped me keep on going was all the preparation and, and hard work I'd done. For one and a half year, every day, I've been imagining this expedition, and I knew that I wanted this. Uh, <coughs> so I think it's so much more mental than uh, in the strength of your muscles. Uh, I believe it's more in your head. So if you can trick your body and hand, head that you're strong, you can do so much more. And I think I was quite good at fooling myself. I will uh, try to explain in a couple of examples. Uh, <coughs> I went on a training trip together with my sister to Greenland. And uh, we decided to make a pact that we call the Easy Pact. And we came up with this pact when we were pulling our sledges from the sea ice up to the plateau that was about a 2,000 meter climb. And our sledges weighed about 120 kilos each, and it was heavy. But if we kept on saying that the sledges are so heavy and it feels so heavy, the trip would be heavy. So we decided we won't use that word. We just say it's easy. And if it's really hard, we could say it's relatively easy. And by doing that, the trip was, uh, of course, easier. And when I was in Antarctica, I really tried to not start thinking negatively. Uh, because if I start to think in a negative way, um, there's no one else who could get me on other thoughts. Only I could motivate myself. So I really tried to stay positive. And I was also good at giving myself compliments. Uh, I thought that I'm superwoman doing these long distance and my body's like made for this. And when I believed in it, um, of course it went easier. And I also tried to celebrate everything I could celebrate. 
like when I passed a degree or I had my birthday on the way to the pole. And then I had to surprise myself with bringing balloons and cake and candle. And I also had a couple of mantras that helped. Uh, and I think it's good to have mantra, but you need to believe in them. So when it was relatively easy, I thought, don't stop just because it's hard. Stop if something is wrong or something hurts, but not just because you're tired. Or when it was heavy and boring, I uh, thought that everything changes. Maybe next hour or next day will feel better because everything changes. And now I will take you back to Christmas Eve. I have about 18 kilometers left. And for the last couple of days, I started to feel pain when I was breathing in my lungs and maybe more on my left side. So as a nurse, I started to think about all the kinds of heart and lung condition I could possibly have. And I'm really winding myself up. But I can't stop now when I'm that close to the South Pole, the people, the Christmas food and the warmth. So I just need to keep on going. And I had to take one kilometer at a time. And I'm also afraid that am I too tired to even be happy when I get there? But when I start to see the buildings of the research stations that, that's our, that are in the South Pole, all these deadly diseases just disappear. And when I just have a few steps left to the pole, I feel only happiness. And <laughs> so what have I learned by skiing to the South Pole? I have uh, hardly changed the world or the environment, but I uh, feel happy and free when I'm doing the trip and I have this good feeling afterwards. And if I have inspired anyone else to go for their dreams, it's uh, so more, much more worthwhile for me. And I have believed more that if you have an idea and you believe in it, anything is possible. And all dreams and goals are, of course, different for different people. But if you find your dream or goal or whatever you want to call it, I hope that you go for it and don't stop just because it's hard. Thank you.